But we are also on the edge of exciting issues. In Finnish you would say, we are jännän äärellä. So a lot of things are happening. You may have uh, read today Aamulehti, front page, remote control center has been established and launched, and it's now in full operation. And a lot of things are happening also. Uh, we will have a session called Automated and Remote Recontrolled Transport now and in the future. So we, we are painting with small things, but also with, in Finnish you would say, with big pencils. So a lot of, we are browsing the future. And we will start with the presentation of Tavi Röivas from Awetek. And he is going to tell us about how technology will change the urban community, commuting, sorry. But not only, you know, short trains, but also a wider scale, global trends. What is going to happen within the future? Let's say a few years ahead. So I will ask Tavi, please take the mic and, and tell your stories. Thank you very much for this uh, kind introduction. And uh, let me just tell you that it's especially especially great to be here in uh, Tampere. Uh, our history is very much linked to Tampere, not only because we have had uh, several projects um, uh, in operation here in city traffic uh, together with um, uh, Remoted, but also uh, already before that uh, we worked very very closely with uh, VTT and are still working very closely with VTT. So, so it's for me very emotional to be here. But having said that, I just came straight from uh, US and I must say that uh, there they speak exactly the same topics, exactly the same trends. So we should be proud that actually here in Finland uh, we can really compare our developments uh, with the ones that are, you know, in places that are globally the most um, uh, forward-looking or, or uh, have uh, reached the furthest. Now, about the trends, uh, I'm a firm believer that we need to see the mega trends of our time. One of the mega trends that is, of course, linked very much to this topic today is um, technology developing even faster than it did before. You remember. Okay, you don't remember. You can only remember it from history books that there used to be the whole ages named after a single tool. Stone Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age, so forth. That was the pace of technology developing. Then, huge shift what happened a few hundred years ago, Industrial Revolution. This changed everything. Invention of steam engine. But it was still like several generations that, you know, took this uh, uh, transition. And then our lifetime, this device was invented more or less 15 years ago, 15 years ago, and it changed a lot. And, and it has um, everything from, uh, you know, TV to video recorder to the, I don't know, uh, I don't think there is any school children in the audience, so, so I can say also cassette player and, and so forth, gramophone. <laughs> if I tell it to school children or, or kids, uh, my kids, uh, oldest is 14, they don't understand. You know, laita puhelin luurilla. But I like laita luuri pojat, put the phone away. Uh, yeah. uh, so, so anyways, they, they, don't, they don't understand this language. 15 years, this is what I want to say. Uh, second trend that is absolutely without saying is climate change. In the Nordics, we realize that this is influencing our life already, but you know, we don't need to agree with this. You know, let's say some of us don't. There is always somebody in the audience who doesn't agree with the fact that climate change is there. But even if you don't agree with this, then what you probably will agree 100% is that uh, the policymakers have decided that we need to react to climate change. And, and this is a topic that will be on the table. Thus, it will influence us anyways. And of course, uh, um, road transportation is a big proportion of, of uh, CO2 emissions. We need to address it somehow. Uh, certainly, electric transport will solve some of the problem. Okay, this is a little bit uh, too extreme picture, perhaps for Finland or even Estonia, where we have not so many people living and, and we have huge areas. But I mean, this is a real picture. I didn't just uh, render it or I didn't ask uh, ChatGDP to 
to make it. And there are so many regions, even in Helsinki, where you see that you look out of the window and you realize that the area is actually built around personal vehicles. Uh, it's not like um, meant for human beings only. Uh, the trend of personal vehicles uh, actually ever exceeding is uh, fully not sustainable. Let me just give you a couple of um, examples. In Europe, we have 292 million cars. In US, 284. In the world combined, 1.5 billion. Which means that in Europe and US, we have much higher level of car usage, personal car usage, than many, many areas, including Africa, including Asia, including Latin America. And if all of them would want to consume as we have been, not, not how we think we can consume in the future, because you know, our use of cars is not decreasing, by the way, and, and we are buying more and more cars uh, all the time in Europe and the US. But if they would come to the same level of consumption, we would need globally eight and a half billion more vehicles. And this just doesn't sound logical. It doesn't sound uh, doable even. Uh, 1.5 billion vehicles roughly now, and we need 4.5 more. So we probably need to uh, find some, some alternative. And speaking about electric cars, of course, I have been driving electric vehicle myself. I have taken my Tesla here to Tampere. I could charge half the way at near the gas station. There is a great charger, but there was already eight Teslas there. In a couple of years, if there is 80, it will be much more difficult to actually find enough spots for charging. So those businesses that are in uh, in charging business, I think, have a lot of uh, work ahead and also that that is uh, part of uh, what, what uh, the cities need to do to, to find like proper charging networks, uh, not only for the roads, but also for communities where you have, uh, for example, apartment houses. I'm a happy person. I have a private home and, and I can charge also at, uh, at work. And for me, using electric vehicle is super simple, but to actually have uh, 100 times more electric vehicles than we have now to reach, let's say, 40% or 50% or of all vehicles becoming electric, we're still very, very far from the uh, infrastructure actually enabling this. So, so there is a lot of uh, work that uh, lies ahead. Now, of course, we can look into the past and, and uh, learn from that as well. Uh, it's a famous um, vision of, of Henry Ward Henry Ford uh, to build a market of uh, simple, strong, reliable, affordable uh, uh, vehicle or motorized vehicle uh, for the uh, masses. Uh, today, you remember that, uh, that also part of the legend says that uh, when he was asked about uh, asking the people what kind of um, vehicles uh, they would uh, like, uh, he was supposedly, supposedly said that uh, we need uh, faster horses or better horses. Uh, today, I think we are in a way in similar tipping point that uh, Henry Ford's age was. Uh, today, we need to think of not having uh, ever better cars or ever better vehicles, but uh, thinking of how to take a commu uh, co commuting to, to next level. And luckily, I think um, when we look at the next generations, they already think this way. Uh, my grandfather, who's 88, I remember from my childhood when he bought the first car. This was like the huge uh, happening for the whole of, of our family or whole of our, uh, uh, all, all the relatives. This was like for lifetime. And he still thinks that you know, his car is, um, is like real estate. Of course, during the Soviet occupation, car buying for life was partly because uh, you only had one chance because you needed a special permission to buy a car. And secondly, the car was so crappy quality. And you do remember, you know, Ladas was, was the high end, you know, try thinking of Moskvich or you, some of you do remember. And it was so crappy quality that nobody would ever buy it from you. So you, you were stuck with it <laughs> for, for the lifetime. My, my father, who's 68, I think, he uh, also, like the first chance when he had to, to buy his car out, he has like, you know, okay, this is my property, I own this car, I need to, you know, this needs to be mine. My generation is a little bit like less to, into that. Uh, I think most of my friends, uh, just like myself, think of cars as, as monthly expense. I pay uh, leasing or, or full service rent. And this is just, but I still have a personal car. I still use a vehicle. I say, this is my car, I need to have it. My kids, oldest being 14, 
Um, I see that for them it's actually more like how do I get from point A to point B. So I hope that the uh, kind of um, generations transfer will actually influence it and we will think of more um, ways of, uh, of commuting. Uh, of course, you know, I wouldn't be in this business if I wouldn't think that uh, at least part of the solution is um, uh, getting more people to public transport and looking what are the bottlenecks of pu public transport. And the only bottleneck, I, I came here by train, by the way, from, uh, from uh, uh, Panta Airport. And the train connection was seamless, convenient, it was quite cheap. I, I have nothing uh, that I could uh, say against it. The only thing was that the train didn't come to Hartwell, no, sorry, I can't say Hartwell Arena in Finland, uh, to, to Nokia Arena. It didn't come here, it came to the train station. Not where I wanted to go, but where the city planners said that here will be the train station. And it's like 600 meters away, which is fine, but because I had a lot of luggage, because I have a, a knee injury, uh, for me it was like not the most convenient. So this is exactly the last bit that was missing. And all of our vehicles are currently in... Uh, few kilometers away uh, to, to doing the route there. But, but in principle, this is ex exactly the route that uh, for me could have uh, been the game changer, the only thing I needed. And of course, there can be a lot of uh, micro-mobility solutions and I have nothing against uh, the scooters, even though it sometimes it feels a little bit silly that all the world is now like playing with uh, the toys, but they are actually surprisingly practical. But only if you live in, in good weather, only if you are not 80 plus years old, only if you are not having uh, your luggage with you, only if you are not, um, um, yeah, if you are not uh, traveling in, in, in rain or, or any other conditions. So, so in many conditions, you need some sort of uh, um, like shuttles. And, and I will tell you in, in, a, in a moment why I think that uh, the, the shuttles that we are operating uh, here, uh, or remote is operating here in, in uh, in um, Tampere are exactly the optimal ones. And of course we can, and I would appreciate if we could discuss it, uh, uh, whether you see it in the, in the same way. Um, we have uh, done a lot of uh, POCs and uh, concepts and we see that uh, actually one, one thing to learn from uh, uh, experiencing autonomous uh, transportation or testing autonomous transportation in, in all the use cases, all the ODDs, as the industry slang says, is that you need, don't need to go everywhere instantly. You need to find the places where autonomous transportation is most welcomed. You need to go to places where there is most people who actually want to use it, and, and you, you need to uh, like really focus on these areas. Uh, it, it doesn't make sense to try to go to all places at once. Let me just give you one example. I don't think that there will ever be uh, autonomous transportation uh, possible in uh, Mumbai uh, city, uh, where there is people in the streets, like million people in one street. The autonomous vehicles probably will just stand there because they are the most polite uh, participants in the traffic and they will just stand and, and not move and wait every, when everybody will go away. But in these Indian cities, you know, never happens that everybody goes away so that the vehicles will just stand, stand and wait. Also, of course, I, I asked to put some pictures uh, from, from uh, Tampere here, it would be very interesting to, to hear uh, whether you see that this is, and I, I hope that Tadu will, will explain this in, in more detail, uh, what the experience has been, whether this is the optimal use case, what we have learned, whether we, there would be some other use cases that would be even better, whether this can be scaled to, to other cities. For us, it has been uh, very interesting uh, projects and there have been uh, thousands of uh, people taking the right, so, so supposedly I think it, it has served uh, the purpose. Now, um, I would go that far, and, and I, I hope I, I, I provoke some discussion with that. I would go that far that uh, in saying that it will probably be impossible to drive autonomously from Tampere to Helsinki uh, for the next 10 years, at least uh, on, the, on the roads. Uh, one of the reasons is, um, th I, mean, I think the technology is actually less of the reason. 
there are uh, vehicles that are capable of, of driving autonomously very fast and it's not very difficult to, to, to imagine that. One of the reasons, of course, is people's perception. Uh, if you are driving like a special purpose vehicle that doesn't have a wheel or steering wheel uh, 100 kilometers an hour in a road, uh, you will be feeling a little bit, uh, let's say, uncomfortable. But, but this is also solvable. I think the most difficult thing, actually, is uh, what to solve is uh, regulations. Um, does anyone know Moore's law for processors? The processors get... Uh, twice as uh, powerful every cert after a certain amount of time and so forth. You know what, as a former politician, I was politician for more than two decades, and, and so sadly, there is no Morse law that uh, works for politicians. So politicians don't get twice as good every, every year or every election cycle, um, and, and that means that, that there are still some issues that the politicians of the world, and we are not unique here in the Nordics, uh, politicians of the world have not been able to solve. And one of the questions which, in my opinion, is actually, as a former politician, uh, not as, as uh, chairman of Auertech, uh, is unsolvable, is ethical issues. I don't think any politician would want to take this respons responsibility to say that, okay, it's perfectly fine to drive over uh, old people, let's keep the young ones alive. Or, or, okay, it's like if it's two people, then, okay, you can hit them. If it's three, then mm -mm, try to avoid. So these kind of questions, I think, uh, are not solvable uh, and, uh, and will not be solved. And this means that uh, until, and, and this could take a lot of time, uh, until we reach to that stage that there will be like a breakthrough in this, until that, I think that uh, it's better to have um, autonomous transportation focusing mainly on the areas where the risks are uh, much uh, smaller. Our vehicle is designed not to hit anyone. And, and even if there happens an accident, the, the speeds are so low that, that the risks are, are, are very, very low. The same is with, uh, with uh, different uh, parcel delivery robots. I put the pictures here well, mainly because uh, uh, Starship uh, on the left, this is really like the size is more or less in the scale. These ones are, are in the streets of Tallinn, US, and in many places, and these were the ones that we were able to legalize first in Estonia, I think it was 2017. Uh, and uh, the reason why nobody was really against it was that, you know, even if something happens with that, uh, it drives like six kilometers an hour on, on a pedestrian walk, uh, it can't be dangerous. Uh, so, so, yeah, I think, uh, uh, that's why the autonomous uh, transportation for the foreseeable future will remain in uh, last mile and, um, and we don't see uh, very, very high speeds. And one more thing uh, that uh, I think is, is worth uh, reiterating here because most of you are, are from the industry or, or very closely related to the industry, just one thing to think about, not only politicians but people in general have higher expectations on technology than other human beings. Uh, if humans uh, drive in this way that they make mistakes, if humans make uh, traffic accidents, cause traffic accidents, that's normal because all humans are, are uh, uh, let's say, allowed to make errors, or, or this is human, right? Uh, if technology makes a mistake, that's super problematic. Uh, you know, in, in Estonia, we, we took a piece of Finnish technology 20 years ago or 22 years ago. Uh, this was called uh, digital identity. Uh, we started using it, uh, it was digital signature, and then most of the other governments uh, told us that you guys are crazy because you know, in theory, digital signature could be broken with like quantum computing or something. And yes, they're right. It has never happened in history, but in quantum computing, yes, in it could, in theory, be that uh, one digital signature, after a lot of work, will be broken. And, and then you, you can ask the, the politicians who have just you know, posed this challenge to the Estonian digital signature, what is the alternative that you are using? Are you using some super safe version of signing yourself? And then they take this. This is what the world is using, right? And. Um, they say that digital signature is breakable. Well, does anyone want to open my iPhone? Try. 
I, I, I challenge you. I, I'm sure that no one in the room can, can actually do it, or, or no one in the room can break my digital signature. But I have been told that uh, when I went to school, you know, second grade, eight-year-olds, I have been told that some of my classmates actually falsified their parents' signature to get away from trouble. I never did it, you never did it, and of course, the bad guys would never do it to falsify somebody's signature. And you know, st still, even in, in here, I, I stay at the hotel which is in the same building, even today I signed them. Yeah. They felt that this is super secure, they, they have no way of knowing what my signature looks like. But coming back to the, to the point, they assume that uh, you know, if I do it, then it's super safe, but if technology does it, then you know, it can be breakable or, or whatever. Uh, so, so there is no room uh, for error, and uh, and that's why, yeah, safer is better, smaller is better, and also, of course, uh, let me see if I have the, uh, oh yeah, here is one picture, just a teaser from the, from the uh, next generation model. I hope that we will see these uh, in in Tampere soon as well. All the first ones are already pre-ordered, and some already sent to to Japan, but uh, the point being is that. Uh, the vehicles, that in our opinion, at Ovetec, uh, in, in the last mile, uh, the, the shape is very much determined uh, by the use case. So, so the boxy shape is mainly because with the footprint of, let's say, Toyota Corolla or Volkswagen Golf, we want to fit uh, as many people comfortably as possible. Uh, it, it, this one has eight seats and it's really um, utilizing all the space, so it's, it has much more space than the, the current model. And, and we see that uh, the shape pretty much will be uh, the same for foreseeable future. We have been asked a million times, do you want to make or will you ever make a bigger model? And we think that uh, probably not, because we see that for city commuting, again, this is something that I, I hope um, Tatu and others can uh, can comment on, but uh, in most of the cases when people jump in, they go you know either alone with their family with a couple of colleagues. But this is not meant to substitute the tram or substitute the train. It's it's addition to that, and in, in principle, it's like a personal or or like a, a vehicle that serves you, not not the whole uh, community at uh, at the same time. Yeah, I will skip a couple of slides. Uh, yeah. I think uh, with that I, I have uh, uh, exhausted uh, most of my time. Uh, if there is any any questions, I would really appreciate if, if the moderator, of course, allows that. And I hope that I, I provoked at least uh, some discussion on uh, on uh, saying uh, that that autonomous uh, in the near future will not take over all the sectors, and we need to focus on mainly those sectors where autonomous is already better than, uh, than human being and, and uh, scale there as much as possible. Thank you for your attention.